Welcome back uh, once again to moderate, uh, the moderate section of R4 Economists. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at time series. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a packed video. I'm going to go over quite a few new commands that are going to help you get uh, your mind around a little bit of the time series kind of stuff that you might be doing in your, say, macro class where you do a lot of time series elements. I notice that this is not a video about panel data that will come a little bit later, but about time series where we have one variable that changes over time. All right. So uh let's get started since we got a lot to get through we're going to start by just let's say that we have some data and we want r to recognize that it is a time series variable notice by the way i said a time series variable r actually recognizes time series data as its own special type of data its own special kind of variable uh, which has a time dimension and of course the variable itself so let's say that i have some data so i'm, I'm just going to create some random data uh, you don't need to worry about how to do this yourself uh, but we're just going to pretend that this is some time series data that R doesn't yet recognize as time series data. Let's imagine you read it in from a from a file, and you but it, R doesn't notice that it's a time series. I'm going to create random data. Uh, you don't need to worry about how I'm doing this. Just this is how you create random data. Uh, we're going to pretend that this is some GDP growth data. Maybe I, I read it in from a file. Okay. So now I have that over there, but of course it thinks that it's a numerical variable. It doesn't recognize it as time series yet. So we're going to declare it as time series with the TS function, right? So we're going to make GDP growth into the time series version of itself. So we're going to feed that in the GDP growth data. Uh, we're going to tell it when it starts. Uh, so I'm going to say that maybe this data starts in uh, 1990, particularly in January of 1990, okay? Then I need to tell it uh, what kind of, of, of year variable. I want, to, I want to say, okay, well, that one, is that a month? Is that the first month of the year? Is that the first day of the year? Is that the first week of the year? It's month. So I'm going to tell basically R that there are 12 of those things in the second part in the year. So I do that. So now it notices that it is a time series object. It also tells me when it starts, and it's going to tell me when it ends as well. Okay? So now we have it as a time series object. Now, the nice thing about it being a time series object is that R knows how to handle time series objects. So if I do something like, say, plot uh, our time series, I just have to do plot GDP growth. And you remember before I said, hey, if you just feed a single variable into plot, it'll do weird things. Not anymore, because now it knows it's a time series plot. So it knows that I want time on the x-axis and the variable on the y-axis, and it will plot it out like that. All right, so this is just some random data that I made so that I could show you how to declare something as a time series variable. Let's go ahead and bring in some actual time series data. So uh, in the AER package, so we're going to bring our libraries, we're going to bring in the AER package. Uh, something that we haven't talked about before is that a lot of packages actually have data sets in them. So you don't necessarily need to download a data set or by, by loading in a file or downloading it from the internet. Sometimes the package itself will actually have the data. And in this case, we're going to bring in some China data, right? I'm just gonna use the data function to get in the China income. Now I happened to know that that was a data set in the AER package that I loaded in. But also if I just do the data thing, if I just do the data function, uh, it will start to uh, tell me what kinds of data sets I have available. Oop, China income, sorry, data. And it will tell me these are all the data sets that are currently loaded in in packages that I can bring into the environment so you can start looking through here if you want to just start working on some data. That's cool. But we want China income, and it'll, of course, help me finish that out. So if I do that, it will put the China income data set in our environment here. Uh, this is not just one time series. This is five different time series, all right? Starts in 1952, plus some of the income variables for China. So this is five different time series. What do you think is going to happen if we plot that out? It immediately knows that I want to plot out five different time series regressions because I fed it to five different time series, right? So you got agriculture, commerce, construction, industry, and transport. Okay, so that's a lot to work with. Let's just pull out one of the time series, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and pull out industry, which is China income, and it's the fifth column there. Okay, so now we have industry by itself. Uh, if we plot industry, you will see what we got, industry. There we go. All right. So 
Uh, it knows how to plot the time series data, which is pretty nice. Uh, we can also do some nice standard tests on that time series data. So for example, uh, you might be familiar with the autocorrelation function or the partial autocorrelation function, which looks at how a variable is related to itself over time. These are basic R commands. So we're going to do the autocorrelation plot, and a, uh, that's just ACF, feed in our time series variable, and it will do it automatically for us. There's our, our autocorrelation function or a partial autocorrelation, PACF, makes sense, and that gives us the partial autocorrelation. Now there's plenty of good stuff that you can do with the base R uh, with time series, but of course there are some other things that we haven't covered yet. Uh, so for example, one of the things that we have not done is the uh, Dickey-Fuller test, which is a pretty standard test that you might run on some time series data. So that Dickey-Fuller test uh, is going to be in the T series, package, which of course has a number of other useful time series functions, but we're just going to be using it for Dickey-Fuller test right now, but you might want to look into it and see what else is in there. So let's bring in the T series package, uh, and then let's go ahead and run the Dickey-Fuller test. And that's just adf.test, and then feed in range new variable. And we have a very large p-value here. We are certainly not able to reject the null uh, that and so we are likely to we, it seems like we have a stationary uh, time series here okay uh, so we run the auto the Dickey Fuller test uh, another thing that is commonly done uh, with um, time series is to uh, is to perform a regression with that time series data so for example you might perform an auto regressive time series uh, regression where you regress a variable on a lag of itself uh, now, base R cannot do this. We need to bring in another package, uh, and that package that we're going to bring in is DynLM. Uh, so if we do library DYNLM, that stands for Dynamic Linear Model, which is, of course, what we want. We want a dynamic uh, regression model where we're regressing a variable on itself, but we're just going to run some, re some regular uh, linear regressions on it. So we're going to run a regression uh, with a lag value. So let's go ahead and get our time series regression. We're gonna, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, and we're going to make that a dynamic linear model. Okay, where we're regressing industry. And we want to regress industry on, on a lag of itself. So we're going to do that with the L function right there, the lag of industry. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. And let's output our results. So let's load in our stargazer package. And then let's do a stargazer look at our time series regression. So here we have industry regressed on a lag of itself, we get a positive significant co uh, coefficient, which makes sense. It's correlated over time. Uh, but what if we want to include more than one lag? Well, we can do that as well. Uh, all we have to do is modify that lag uh, function uh, and just tell it how many lags we want. Uh, so we have the L function already. So let's go ahead and just include a second lag in there. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do that again with TS reg two. And we're just gonna lag and then comma, how many lags do we want? Let's do lag one through three, why not? So we run that, we look at our results and we can see that we have the first, second and third lag of industry in there. Looks like those first two ones are significant, the third one, not so much. All right, uh, one last thing that I want to do with some time series data, I want to do a seasonality plot. So let's go ahead and do a seasonality plot. We're first going to need to tell R uh, the seasonality of our time series. Now before I did this, right, where I declared the GDP growth data to be uh, beta with a year and a month and frequency 12, right, so that because there, there's 12 months in a year. Um, now this time series data that we per currently have uh, it does not. Re it doesn't. It knows that it goes from uh, month to month, but it doesn't necessarily know the frequency. So let's go ahead and declare it uh, as a season, as a particular seasonality. So we're just going to redeclare our industry variable using the time series. We're going to start with industry already, and we're just going to say frequency equals twelve, just to let it know. Yeah, actually, we are working with months here. Okay. Uh, so now uh, we have our 
uh, industry data. Uh, and uh, we want to then, uh, we're going to use the STL function to basically do a, a, season, a, a, a seasonality smoothing here, right? We're going to sort of smooth out from the seasonality, so we're basically de-seasonalizing de our data with STL. So we can do that uh, with the STL function. The L stands for low S, by the way. It's using a low S smoother uh, of industry and s dot window equals period basically just telling it the seasonality period there uh, so now we have some seasonality data we have seasons here which is a list it's including our time series uh, and it's also including some seasonality information so now we want to plot out our seasonality data we're going to need another package to do that uh, we're going to use the forecast package so if we load in library forecast okay uh, forecast has, has a, not a lot of other good uh, time series in from, uh, uh, live functions in there as well, so I'd recommend checking that out. We're going to use it again uh, when we look at some other time series regressions. But for right now, we're, used, we're interested in the season plot uh, command. So we're going to plot out a seasonality plot for industry. Okay, uh, and that is just going to be as simple as season plot of industry, uh, which you now know. Uh, is seasonality data, or is, is we, we seasoned it, right? We used a, the, the frequency up here to tell it what the season was. So now it's giving us the uh, plot of the data for each month of the year and the different years that it is in. Uh, so we have, it's not, it's currently not labeled which year is which, but you can add that as an option as well. Uh, so we have one of the years looks like this, another year looks like this, and then the final year looks like this. And then we have a lone January of the final year of data that we have. All right, that's our introduction to time series data. Uh, that gives you quite a, li a lot to work with, right? You know how to get auto We know how to declare our, our data to be time series data. We know how to get uh, a plot of that data. We know how to make sure that it's, it's identified with the correct frequency so that it knows whether it's a month or a year or whatever it is. We know how to get autocorrelation plots. We know how to get partial autocorrelation plots. We know how to uh, run a regression with a lagged value using the... Um, Dyn LM uh, uh, regre uh, regression uh, function. And finally, we know how to get a seasonality plot as well, as well as how to de-seasonalize our data with STL. We didn't actually de-seasonalize in the plot that we had. We did use STL to de-seasonalize the data. All right, uh, that's it. And I will see you in the next video for a little bit more on time series. Thank you.